Hello, Mum. Yes, of course I took the dog out. Yeah, and I fed him as well. No, there's nothing. No, hello, Mum. Uh, I think uh, we must be uh, breaking up. Uh, uh, we're too far from the cell tower. <laughs> what is a cell tower, and why do we have them? Today we're going to be going through the cell tower project kit. It looks like this, so get your project kit ready. We're going to jump right into how to make your own project kit with a little nifty little substation with a door and everything. Isn't that exciting? Anyway, so grab it and let's jump straight in. All right, great. Well, let's take a look at what the contents of the kit are. So we can just take this guy off, open up our bag, and take all the contents out. Great. So inside the kit at the back is a an insert which has got the task and the design criteria that you are going to follow after the second or in the second part of this video. So I'm just going to be showing you how to build the substation. Um, the actual tower itself is going to be designed by you in terms of its structure, in terms of its height and the colors that you use. So let's get right in. Um, then you've got a front insert just with a nice picture of an awesome cell tower. So inside the kit, we're going to have some curious gum. We're going to have a few profiles that look like this, two of them with windows. They are the same and will be symmetrical. And you're going to have a smaller piece with two wings, a bigger piece with two wings and a door. You're then going to have this um, item, which is going to be um, part of our profiles. Then we've got the same size piece, except this time with a cutout. This is going to be where our battery is going to be housed. And then we've got a little square piece. It is smaller than the other one. And that's because this is going to be the ceiling while this is going to be the roof. So they're going to link together like that. So we'll, I'll show you exactly how this is done. Then you've got some paints and some wood glues. They look like this. You've got two red paints and then you've got two white paints and two wood glues. Now I realize they look quite the same, but a way that you can tell them apart the paints have got a little bit more dry, dried paint on the sticks. So over here and over here, I can see that there's a little bit of white. So, and I know that these are the paints. And so I know that this is the glue. You can also open the glue up and give it a smell. Yep, definitely smells like glue. While these ones have a different smell. Yeah, that is definitely paint. Great. So we've got two white paints. Let's keep those together with the reds. And we've got a glue. Then we've got a few paint brushes. So here we've got two, I think there might be a third. No, nope, just two paint brushes, one for each color. So we'll have a white paint brush and a red paint brush. You will also have three large elastics, a bag of electronic equipment, including the plastic housing for our battery, which will sit nicely in that little recess in the roof. And you've got your curious sticker, how awesome. This we can put on our substation when it's finished. We've got some thread. This is going to be used to create some cable stays um, to be able to tie your, your tower down um, with a little bit of, su of support. Because as, as cell phone towers get larger, the wind and the elements become a bit of a problem. We've also got two 10 by 20 um, plates. One of these which we'll use for the base. We then also have a cardboard piece which is the same size as the base. And we have a set of, let's see, we've got 10 10 coffee stirrers over here, 10 coffee stirrers in a neat little bundle. So let's start with the house or the substation. I'm going to show you how to put it together. So all that we will need for this is these two profiles. We'll need the door and this, the, the, the roof, um, and we will need the ceiling. This we can actually put aside because this is going to be the roof. I was mistaken earlier. This is going to be the front wall. This will be the back wall. And you can see that they are the same width, but different, different heights. That's because the roof slants at an angle. So we'll have the front wall over here in the front and the back wall will slot in nicely over there. All right, so let's get this going. So we can put the electronic equipment aside for now. The sticker you can put on your pencil case or on your door. Um, wherever you do put it, make sure that you're allowed to put it there. And for this, we will need just two elastics we can keep the spare to the side. Our thread is for the tower, and of course, our paintbrush is for the last for final touches. So, in order 
order to do this, we need to put some curious gum on the bottoms of all the walls and join them together. Alternatively, you can use glue, but I recommend using curious gum. It's a little bit easier to work with. And then once everything is together, you can then add a bit of glue for some extra strength. So using some scissors, let's clip some small pieces of the curious gum, tiny little pieces. That should be fine for now. If you use just less than half of the curious gum, and that should be more than enough. Great, so you can see where the joins are for all of the pieces. So for the front wall, you can see that there's um, big wings that's, that join together. And they are, of course, going to join at a 90 degree angle. So we can join it together like that. So in order to do this, we want to get the wings. So this is a wing, that's a wing, and this is a wing. We want each of them to have a piece of curious gum. So I'm just going to take these little pieces and halve them, roll it into a nice long sausage. And place it along this wing over here. I'm going to do the same again on these two wings. Just like that. We will then join it together. Oh, I seem to have made a mistake. See, so what you can see here is that. I've put it the wing on the wrong side because if I put it this way, the door is going to be upside down. I'm just going to take this one off, put it on the other side. Before we attach it, I'm also going to just crumple the door so that it is able to bend. And the way that we'll do this is on a flat surface with a ruler, just put a bend on the hinge part of the door. So not the long side, the hinge part. I'm just going to press and it will fold just like that. Absolutely perfect. <laughs> Now let's join these walls together. All right, put a little bit of force in every direction. Oh, be careful not to bend your model. And if you want, just going with your ruler, just pressing the curious gum in to place. Great, so at this point we have all four of the wars to, together. So now what I'm going to do is just using four pieces of curious gum, or two of these little pieces, all cut in half. One, two, and another, oopsie. Another one, two. I'm gonna place these on the bottom of the substation in different locations. I'm not pushing it into the fluting just yet. I'm just making it a ball that sits on the top so that when we push it onto the bottom board, that is when it will squash into place and bind with everything.
And now what we want to do is we want to select a side, whether the left or right, it's really up to you. Um, I do prefer putting it on this side. No reason, just uh, it's what I want to do. And then I'm going to make sure all the four walls are lined up and press down. Great. So now what we're going to do is have this open area for the cell tower. So the cell tower is going to be here. So we want the, the, the cable for the, the, the LED light to be running from the substation into the tower. So we want this to be on the left hand side in my case. If you, if you have your, your power station on the left, you will want to have your roof over here. So it runs up into the tower. So I'm going to put that there. And then just to prevent the, the battery holder from falling through, we're going to glue the ceiling on. This also prevents the roof from sliding about. I'm going to put a little bit over here. spread it about a little bit if you have something that you want to use instead of your finger by all means but um, I really don't mind using mine purely because I know that it comes off quite easily there we go and then you're going to just place this kind of in the middle lining it up as best you can and applying a little bit of pressure you might want to give it a wiggle that it really takes but I think that we have got success I'm just going to scrape the excess off great and then the final step we're going to put a little bit of glue on the top of the of the substation so along the tops of the walls I'm just going to run a little bit there bit on just on the inside of this cardboard here and then like I said I'm gonna have my cable facing to the left I'm just gonna put it in place Oh, it seems as though this needs to go the other way. Great, there we go. The roof is on, so I'm just going to push all the walls into the ceiling just to make sure it's binding and have it, it has a nice joint over there. Just applying a little bit of pressure. Go. Oh, we have a runaway. <laughs> Not to panic. That does sometimes happen when I'm placing enough pressure or too much pressure on the glue, and then it suddenly gives. And there we have it. There is our substation nearly complete. Now we just need to wait for this to dry. But in the meanwhile, we, let me run through how to make the electronic circuit that we're going to attach to the substation. So get your electronic equipment out. Let's put this slightly to the side and we're going to get this one out. Careful not to break your acrylic when you are doing this. Great, 
right, so we've got some wrapping wire that we are going to use in our kit to, to wire everything up. We've also got a coin cell battery, just a little three volt coin cell. I'm gonna actually take this out. And throw the rest away. And then we have got a Perspex or an acrylic um, battery cell holder. You can peel this plastic off. You should have some on both sides. There we go, so now it's a beautiful little holder. So we're gonna undo the wrapping wire and we're going to then cut it in half. We're going to cut it in half. Okay, be careful not to get tangled or knots. Great, so we just want to kind of find the halfway point. Which is over there for me. And give it a cut. Nice and simple. Then what we are going to do is we're going to take, using just our nails, we should be able to just gently choose about a two centimeter area. And with your nail, you're just going to pull and eventually the insulation will give and you'll be able to just have the exposed wire, which is what we want in this case. Going to do the same thing on this side. On the other side, give yourself about a three centimeter gap, so a little bit more space. Oh, that's a, that's not good. I broke the whole wire. That's fine. There we go. Okay, and these little pieces of the housing you can throw away. And let's do the same on the other side. So on this side, about a two centimeter length. And on this side, about a three centimeter length. It must just be noticeably longer, is the goal. Oh, that's no good. There we go. That should be good. So we're going to take the two long sides and put them on the same end. And then on the shorter sides, we're going to wrap these along the prongs on the LED. So you're going to choose a side. On an LED, there are two different lengths of the prongs. The longer length is a positive um, a, a positive side and the shorter um, the shorter prong is the negative side a way that you can remember this is that we have subtracted some of the length from the short side subtraction negative all right and we've added some length on the other side so addition positive so we're going to wrap one of the wires on the positive side by doing by putting the the um, the end of our wire quite close to the actual LED itself and then just wrapping around nice and tight, only on the one electrode. Great, there we go. This little excess that we, that we have, we do want to cut off. And just tuck it away. Great. Now on the other side, we want to put the other wire. Not the other end of this one, but the other wire. So I'm going to do the exact same thing. Seems like this one, we don't have to cut off the excess, which is quite nice. Great. So our LED is wired up. And now on the other side, we can now wire the the battery but what we do need to do is take a look to see which is our positive uh, end in this case is this side and i'm going to put the positive i'm going to wrap the positive over the middle prong so these two holes in the middle so i'm just going to feed it through on the on the, the bottom and feed it back through from the top and be sure not to go into those two holes you want to go into the same hole on the same piece of plastic and just bring it so that it's in contact and give it a twist so that it's nice and tight and in place. Great, so that is our positive side of our positive terminal. Now we need to wire the negative, but be careful, do not come from the same side. You now want to go from the top 
underneath and back to the top so that you wrap it on on this side because when you put the battery in it's going to sit in this gap over here uh, um, uh, underneath the outside prongs and on top of the bottom prong and so the, the way that that's going to sit is here it's making contact with the the wire over there whereas when these two prongs are on top of the battery we need to have contact being made there so that's why we're going to feed it from the top back through the bottom and give it a twist here as well there we go great so now we know the positive is in the middle and the negative is on the outsides so when we put the battery in we want to match so the positive side must make contact with the positive side and we're just going to inside here just gently press up the, the prongs and once it's making contact, you will see that the LED will indeed turn on. Very exciting, so that's really cool. So at this point, we now have got a circuit nicely wired. So we wanna just go from the LED, just hold the wires, not the LED, and get these to the same length, and give it a twist over there. Just about two centimeters away from the battery. You could even, if you wanted to at this point, tie a knot. Just to make sure that these cables are always the same length in our tower. Great, and so from here we have got our wire, our wire, or our circuit wired up. So we're now just going to place it gently into the little recess that it's got over here. And that is where it is going to live. Great, so now that we've finished building our house, we can put it to the side for now. We won't need it anymore. If you'd like, you can just take the battery out just to save it for once we have finished our tower. And we'll put this to the side. Then, this next part of the project is all up to you. So you must design and make your own cell tower um, using what you've learned in class, using some of the things you've perhaps researched. So this includes um, cell towers that exist today, the function of the cell towers, as well as the design of them. And so here's a few pointers to maybe help you get, um, to maybe help you along. So one of the most common cell tower shapes is the truss, or is, it's a series of triangles. So you're going to have four panels or four walls of your cell tower. Sometimes you can even do it in just three. But in this case, I'm going to show you what a four panel would look like. So what we would then have is we'll have our skewers, um, the, uh, two skewers running parallel, approximately, I think about six centimeters apart should be good. Maybe you can make it seven. Then you want the top two to be pointing slightly, or the outside, um, the outside skewers to be slightly pointing inward, just like so. And then two skewers are gonna be inside making an X shape. So you're going to have two skewers on the inside making an X shape. And you wanna join them on the top and at the bottom um, together using um, some curious gum. So that is, uh, that looks like this. Here's the rest of our curious gum. Use it sparingly, but uh, but obviously you're going to have to be um, a, 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 as best as possible, make the joins as strong as possible. Um, so what I recommend doing is going one join at a time. So for example, um, just getting a little bit of curious gum here. Just a little dollop, putting it on the top or the bottom, and then joining your pieces together like so and doing this over and over according to your design, according to the shape that you're wanting to go for. There we go, so let's go back to our seven centimeter size. There we go. Great, so this will have to turn over. go and we're gonna do the same thing on the reverse side but now going the opposite direction of course great 
Right, so there we go. Press it in place. And press it in place over here as well. So already this is quite a strong little structure. You can see I can move it to the sides. So what we can do is, is just to add a little bit of, str of strength, we're going to cut a skewer to size to be the bottom layer. Just adding a score line to make it uh, cut nice and easily. Don't cut through with it. You just want to make a score line so that you can just break it. it works very nicely. And then I'm going to just grab two more pieces of curious gum. to just push it into the bottom and I'll do the same thing on the top so where's that small piece I just cut off over here so now I know that this length is going to be just that about three centimeters or so I'm gonna make a score line oh I cut through <laughs> that's fine that happens and just with two pieces over there and over there, placing it on top. Great, and that is our first wall of our cell tower. So obviously your design can be different if you perhaps wanna go with the three piece approach. So just having a part like this having one cross member and then having a piece on the bottom having a piece on the bottom and then one piece on top like so so you can see the difference here. We've got an X shape in the middle. Over here, we just have one diagonal that we're joining together. Now, when you're making your square shape or your triangular triangle shape, obviously a triangle will be a bit more effective in terms of how many pieces you have. And so if we're to put this to the side and we have this as our cell tower, this wall or th these two pieces on the outside are now going to be over here. It's the right hand side over here to the left. But when we now make our, th our next wall over here, this piece will share responsibility with the, with the next wall. So when we build the next part, we're going to build off of this. So we've already got our left hand side piece in place. We then want a, one on the right. And then we want our cross members. And then finally, when we're on this side, of course, this piece will be somewhere here. We now have got a piece on the right and this becomes the left hand piece and we'll create our X shape over here. So what that will end up with a triangle. So let's just see if this will sit here nicely. So I'll have a triangle there, then we'll have a piece over here and another piece at the bottom as well. Of course, it won't be this long. And that is going to be the base of this cell tower. But if you wanna have a square, it's gonna be the same thing, except of course, it's just going to be a square shape like so. There we go. And that is going to be the base of our cell tower. Now, when you're finished making your cell tower, I want you to strategically choose where you want to paint the different colors. I recommend starting at the bottom with red. So for example, I would maybe on this paint red from here to the X. So I'll make a line over there, an imaginary line and paint red until that point. Then I'll paint white until this point, And then I'll do a second layer. A second layer, I would do half of it to, to the, till the middle of the X in red and then the rest of it in white. And then maybe finishing off the top with a bit of red. If you want to literally, once you are finished with your cell tower, the length of it being probably more than 30 to 40 centimeters. Remember, according to your design criteria, your cell tower must be at least 40 centimeters high. So your goal in this case would be here. So if we just did this exact same thing again, you can see we would exceed that, which is great. So I recommend the height of your cell tower. You can maybe divide it into five paint each section a different color, divide it into six maybe, or maybe you just wanna do the bottom half red, the top half white, and the little pyramid on the top um, a, a different color or red. Um, that is totally fine. This part is up to you. So just go one thing at a time, go nice and slowly and be very, very frugal with your 
um, with your curious gum don't be putting too much curious gum on at a time and then build your cell tower from there then of course when you're finished you want to bring your 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 um, substation back um, using curious gum just place your cell tower next to it and feed your wire up to the top in this case it might just go through the cell tower in the middle all the way to the top and then once we turn it on it will then look like a lovely little cell tower which is really exciting and so that is the cell tower model again from here it is all up to you so i suggest um, that you do your research figure out what you would like to do maybe find a reference photo of a cell tower that you want to that you want to make and design and then use that then finally for this piece of cardboard the 10 centimeter by 10 centimeter piece what I recommend doing with this is perhaps actually being a bit creative with some shapes. You can see on our photograph, the cell tower has some satellite dishes and some other little can, um, receivers and, trans, um, and transmitters. And so using this cardboard, you can decorate your cell tower with some extra elements to make it look a little bit more realistic. If you want the top of your cell tower to look like this, be sure to include that in your design and plan for it using the skewers you have. Um, and then finally at the end of it you'll have a nice little cell tower with a red light on the top very exciting so until next time stay curious cheers thanks for watching and stay curious